what do you think that states or governments or schools just need to do more of in order to get more people of color to enter the field of education? And what's holding us back from joining? Oof. Yeah, <clears throat> as you know, it goes deep. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think two super like tangible things that are actionable next steps that no one takes. Um, one is more money. Um, it's very simple, like the, the concept that teaching has been so deprofessionalized in this country mm. to the point where people don't even consider it as a viable way to make money or sustain life or build a career off of yes. is, is sad. Um, you know, it's really sad. It's, and it's harmful. And I think we right. forget that part. That's harmful to our society. That's harmful to who we're putting in the classroom. That's harmful to how we think about our educators, how our kids think about our schools. Mm. Like it is destructive for us to deprofessionalize something that is so critical to our development, not only as little people, as adults, as a society, right? And to revere a Columbia degree if Obama has it, you mm -hmm. know, but not have the guts to show up for kids who are gonna go to a CUNY and wanna become engineers too, mm. or wanna become politicians too, mm. is backwards, it's hypocritical. You can't revere the same thing that you're not willing to professionalize when it comes to the folks who do the dirty work. That's mm. not fair. And so, you know, it's interesting. I say that obviously coming from a place of privilege holding two Columbia degrees and knowing mm -hmm. the privilege that that comes with, but also stepping into those spaces, acknowledging that I don't think you know more than anyone at any other school just because <laughs> you're here. And that goes for me too. You know, I'm gonna step into that every single time. And of course, you know, pushing the discourse to a place where it's like, okay, you have this much. Why don't you do X, Y, Z? Why don't mm -hmm. you do more? Mm -hmm. Teachers deserve more. And the second thing that I will say beyond money, which goes a very long way, especially when yeah. you look at teacher salaries in this country. And I really yeah. implore, my kids were doing my salary work to think about mm -hmm. how much three bacon, egg and cheeses a week for 10 kids cost out of my pocket. Exactly. So when they took it and said, thank you, I know they meant thank you. You mm -hmm. know what you know what you just did and you know what I just did and I got you. Mm -hmm. Ain't no harm, no foul. I got you, mm -hmm. but understand this is the system we are operating under, right? Nice. The second piece is support. Money's the biggest support, but then you need support. The same way we talk about students and social emotional needs, we need to be talking about teachers and social emotional, mm. need, emotional needs, especially if you're trying to attract teachers of color. Mm. Are you kidding me? To sit in a classroom space and see folks that look like you, little people that look like you going through some of the very things you went through 10, 20 years, it's not easy. Mm. It is another layer of trauma. It is another layer of empathy that requires energy that a lot of white teachers don't have to expend. Even the good ones, even the ones doing a lot of work, it's not the same. And so, you know, I implore, I implore systems, I implore locally, statewide, federally money, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely think that, you know, we should think about the ways in which we can support the adults in the room as much as we're so hell bent on doing research on social emotional needs of mm. students. Because largely, if you think about the supports, they're going to mirror those supports because this is a community, baby. Mm. We've cycled through some of those systems and that trauma ourselves. So just because we're here and we're older doesn't mean we don't also require supports we never got. Mm. And so I think if it were framed in a way which, and this is, it just plays into the larger unfortunate narrative of education existing in a silo, right? Where we don't think mm -hmm. of education as a part of this comprehensive support that we receive from society. We think of education as schooling. Mm -hmm. We think of education as where you go to read books and write essays and do math and pick up, you know, it's mm -hmm. very, very, very different than what comprehensive support for a person can look like, which includes education a thousand percent, right? Yeah. So because we, we struggle to think about that framework, I understand why it becomes such a diluted narrative when we think about what teachers need and what teachers deserve. Mm. But when we approach it from the same framework that, you know, people who are trying to move into more equitable practices think about when they think about children, they forget about the adults who are often bearing some of the same burdens while doing the work mm. that y'all can't do as you do the research, that y'all aren't doing as you do the research, right? Like, damn, you. Yeah. how easy is it to subsidize therapy? You subsidize the MTA. Mm. You, subs you do monthly luncheons. You do, mm. you blow bread on a retreat each year to do mm. what, more PD? Yeah. <laughs> subsidize some therapy for some teachers of oh, color. Man. Give them options for, what do you need right now? Yeah. What do you need right now? 
because mm -hmm. I don't want to blindly make that decision. That seems like a waste. Which often happens. Anytime you think about PD and anytime you think about someone thinking, telling us what we need to grow, they've picked it for us and they, we have no input in it. And how can you really tailor it to our needs if you think everyone needs the same thing, everyone needs to go to this summer right. training or whatever. Well, wow. so, so you made two, made a lot of great points, but two things that really stuck out to me was one, right? If we talk about essential workers, right? If we talk about how much they value us, every essential worker needs to be paid more frontline, but how okay. essential are teachers and educators, right? That's why they're opening the schools up regardless of the numbers. That's why they're trying to do anything to make sure that we're in the building because we matter. We make the economy go around. We make the, mm. the country work. And if people don't realize that now, they never will. So they need to up that pay and up that salary for us because we, without us, if we really were to strike or to not have teachers, this country will be shut down forever, Absolutely. you know, completely. And then another thing you said was, and I felt, I feel this being a black man and being an educator all the time. And I know a lot of people of color do as well, because we get into the field to impact all students' lives, but specifically, we were kids in this classroom sitting at that chair at one point, and we yeah. felt how it felt to be those kids. So we come in wanting to support yeah. our black and brown kids and wanting yeah. to do more for them. But then we're in the system and we see sometimes that our hands are tied because we're overworked and overwhelmed, sometimes because um, we see administrators or people not make the best decisions for mm. our students. We burn out and we get defeated easily, more easily than others because we're not being supported socially, emotionally, but also because of the trauma of now being a teacher, getting into the field to support these kids and seeing that they're going through the same thing that you went through and the mm -hmm. system hasn't changed in 30, 40, 20 years. And you're like, damn, can I, one me, really make an right. impact? Right. Was I, was I lying to myself when I first got into this position or this field? Right. And right. that could be, that's a heavy burden to carry. And then when you add on all the other things they expect teachers to do, that's why, and then the salary is not even up to par. That's when we lose a lot of our, our Black and Latino teachers yep. who actually come into the field. They're like, whoa, whoa, I'd rather just take care of myself and, and, and I'll, I'll do a job, even if it pays less than teaching, but the amount of stress that you get right. in, mm. in this position and you're not compensated for it, it's, it's too much sometimes. 